I'd like for you, not to make it a bummer, but I'd like for you to pray about the kingdom. The Bible says the kingdom has come. It ain't coming. And it says when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the land for everybody to hear, then shall the end come. But the gospel of the kingdom is not being preached in all the land. And I tell you, since the devil can read that scripture, he knows when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the land, his time is up. But, so he's made it um, illegal and unfavorable to preach the gospel of the kingdom in the church of Christ. But we do here. Thank God for Jesus Christ. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. Now, knowing that, we talked last week about this. What are the benefits of being in the kingdom of God? To start off with, we live in the earth. And it says we're to obey the laws of the land in which we live. But... We're not limited by the conditions of the earth because we are part of a greater kingdom. And we have to come to recognize ourselves as that or we cannot live the benefits that Jesus purchased for us. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. So here in this earth, in this earthly kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. It's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God in the earth. And we're citizens of that. And as citizens, we are entitled to being citizens in the earth and what it brings. So this morning, I want us to spend a little time because we're going to the table of the Lord and have communion. And really when we have communion, we're having communion over this. It's the table of thanksgiving. And so most churches say you go to the table of the Lord and make sure that you confess all your sins before you take communion, because if you don't, you take it unworthy, when really it's right opposite that. It's called the table of thanksgiving. You come to the table of thanksgiving to thank him that your sins are forgiven. And that's why you're thankful. So we're going to uh, come to the table of the Lord with that understanding this morning. Now, if you look at Romans, in Romans in chapter 8, What are some of the benefits of being citizens in the kingdom of God? In Romans 8, let's look at verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself, that's us, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. And we are joint heirs. Look at verse 16. And if children, then heirs. Well, look at, yeah, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. We are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's what God is trying to reveal in us. We are the sons and the children of God right here, right now. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons or children of God. 
So what are some of the benefits of being in the kingdom? Well, that means we're joint heirs with Christ. And Christ, God gave Jesus and made Jesus head over everything in his throne. So we're joint heirs in everything that belongs to Jesus Christ. Joint, that means equal. And it says that we should think this way. That we are equal to Heavenly Father in Christ Jesus. And that's how we should think. But we're told not to think that way. But we do. Hear it, voice for Jesus. So what are some of the uh, provisions or blessing? Look at Romans 10. We are joined ours with Christ in all the creation of God. In Romans 10 and verse 9. Now if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what are one of the benefits of the kingdom? We have right standing with God forever and ever and ever. One of the benefits. And they are many and they're glorious. I look at John. The book of John. Benefits of being citizens in the kingdom of God. Verse 16, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What's the benefits of being a citizen of the kingdom of God here on the earth? We have everlasting life. We're going to be forever with him in heaven. How wonderful is that? And if you're not part of the kingdom of God, you don't have that. You have everlasting life, but you're not going to spend it one with God. You're going to spend it one with Satan in hell, but not us. Our home is heaven. Heaven. And we're told one of the benefits again. We are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're already sitting there. We're sitting in the eternal throne of God in heaven. You know, I try, I tell you, I try to realize since Monica's gone on to be with the Lord, and it says you'll be known as you're known, so she's Monica today. She's just there. And I try to realize what heaven must be like in eternity. And you can't even think that big. Just think when I get there, if I know her, and you and all your loved ones, I can take her by the hand and walk forever and ever and ever and ever without ever any fear or sadness or depression or sickness, anything. Just joy. I can't even imagine the glory of that. But that's our future. Yes, it is. And we've already been born into that kingdom right here in the earth. And it says we can walk in this earth just like that. That his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So we're already eternal creatures. We can already hear from the Spirit, be led by the Spirit. Another benefit of being in the kingdom of God. 
we have the leading of God Almighty in what directions to step, to take, and what we should do. Now, look at 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, in chapter 2, And verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always, everybody say always, always, causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. What's the benefit of being in the kingdom of God? We will always triumph. We will always win. Whatever we do, the Satan's going to try to stop us. But don't stop. If you have difficulty, the, the Lord just lets the devil put difficulty on our path because from them, we learn what we need to change to have victory. That's all it is. It's a lesson for us. Just keep walking. And as the Bible says, you'll receive in due season if you faint not or if you don't weak. Don't give up. Keep going. You're going to win. We can't lose. He always causes us to triumph. So what's another benefit of being in the kingdom? Eternal, constant victory. Now look at Acts. Chapter 13. I'm sorry, chapter 16. And this is one of the scriptures that uh, changed my life. This is one of the scriptures the Lord showed me and I held on to. When I first come to know Jesus. And I, I told a pastor about this where I was attending church and he said, but Brother Wayne, you can't interpret that to mean that. Because God's not going to impose his will on that person or your will. It's going to be their will. Well, no. But he can put things in their path to lead them to that. And I love this. In verse 31 of 16. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they shall be saved, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And I told you I knew that mean, didn't mean brick and mortar or lumber and nails. It means the people in my house. So from that scripture, the Lord has promised each and every one of us that everybody in our house will be saved, immediate family. Believe on that. And of course, it'll have to be their free will decision. But he'll lead them on the path that will lead them to that. And I thank God. And so I become proof of this, that everyone in my immediate family believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Several of them here in the church every Sunday. Their children, their spouses, grandchildren. I mean, my granddaughter, my great-granddaughter singing in praise and worship. Son-in-law running sound. Others right here believe in Jesus Christ. So the word has come true in my life. Amen. And I ask you to believe that. He's not going to go against their will, but he knows how to lead them to his will. And when we declare that, we're actually releasing him to begin to lead them there. So begin to thank the Lord every day for their salvation, even before they see it, because we walk by faith, not by sight. We don't have to see it to believe it. For word says it, we believe it. And we believe then because of that, we will see it. 
So we've been healed fully, set free. And the word they're healed or saved means fully healed and made whole already. So I want you to know you're not going to be healed. You are healed. So if the devil tries to put a sickness on you, know that it's a lie. You're healed. That don't stop him from trying. But know as we said, when Jesus said it is finished, it was finished. It's all been done. All we have to believe, do is believe and walk in it. That's why it says believe only. There's nothing left to be done except believe what has been done. So, what I want the benefits of being in the kingdom of God? Well, if you're in the kingdom of God, you're in the kingdom of heaven because it's a spiritual kingdom. Not the, kingdom, not the kingdoms of this world, but the kingdoms of heaven. Glory to God. He's Lord of Lord and King of Kings. In the spirit of heaven, you are King and Lord. Walk like that. Learn the benefits of being a king. Glory. Look at Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 3. Praise your Lord. And in verse 14, and I said, when you read this, if you understand it, Pastor Paul was praying for each and every one of us here this morning. For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you. See, he has to grant it. If he didn't grant it, it wouldn't be possible, but he has granted it that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. What's the benefit of being in the kingdom? You're filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all we ask to think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. And I said before, remind you, I'll say it again. People will tell you, they used to tell me, when I believe this, when our brother Wayne, you know, you're taking this too far. You can't take it too far. You don't even have the knowledge to take it far enough. He meant that. That he's given us a power to do even beyond our wildest dreams. So don't be afraid to dream. Just be concerned you're not dreaming big enough. Because he's a dream maker. So, benefit of the kingdom? That we're going to be able to be and do abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Praise you, Lord. Now look at Colossians chapter 4. In Colossians, in chapter 4, in verse 11. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct your way unto you and the Lord make you increasing and bound in love toward one another 
and toward man, even as do toward us, that in the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in the holiness before God, even our Father, in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. So, he makes us co-workers in his kingdom because we're one in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. In Galatians 3, And in verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, because we're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Mm. So we are heirs of all the promises of God. Not because of what we do, but because of what he did. You already are heirs. In the kingdom, you are heirs of everything God promised Jesus Christ. And he made him Lord above all things in heaven and in the earth. I remember another scripture, it's a promise. Don't even know if I have it in my notes since we quote it so much. In in the kingdom of God, all your needs are met according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So if you have a need in your life now, I want you to know it's already been met. And if you believe it, it's going to be manifest in your life. And if you don't believe it, it won't. And that's why the devil don't want us to believe it, because we become evidence that the promises of God are true. And he can't have that in the earth. So God needs us as evidence. He says that. It says in Acts, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the power to become a witness. In Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth, the word witness there means Living proof. We become living proof. What Jesus said is true. So he wants us to receive the manifestation of all his promises. Now I have a little book. I don't know if it's available in our bookstore. It probably is. That lists all the promises of God. I want you to know you're an inheritor of those promises. Go read what God has promised. And they're yours. It's very encouraging. You'll find that there's not a need in your life that's not covered in that book. And we're an inheritor of that. Not because of something we have to do, but because of something he has done. Glory to God. Now, look at John chapter 1. And we're going to go ahead and go to the table of the Lord. Very important this morning that we do. In John chapter 1, In uh, verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received. And grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now no man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the, in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed 
and deny not, but, but confess, I am not the Christ. But he said that he was one with Christ. And that's who we are. And of course, what we call the Lord's Prayer, it's not really the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer he told us to pray. It's our prayer. To pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. What's his will? That we bring the life in the conditions and the manifestations of the promises of God in heaven today into this earth. And through us, people can even see what heaven is like. And I really enjoy now thinking about heaven. Call it eternal life or hereafter. Now I call it heaven. That's what he called it. And that's where Monica is today. To live forever and ever and ever. And I'm going to join her there. I fully believe that. And I believe each and every one of you will. Because you believe in Jesus. Which means we're going to all see her again. Amen. And I look forward to it. And uh, I didn't think at one time that I would ever get over my fear of death. I mean, whew, if a storm come up, I got scared. Always afraid of dying. Oh, my God. But, you know, I believed in the promises of God. I believe that Monica's in heaven and that I'll know her when I get there. So if you want to know the truth, I enjoy life here on this earth. And I want to be here as long as I have something to fulfill that he means for me to do. And I enjoy being here. But I don't have no fear of death no more. Because I'm going to get to see her again. And my mom and daddy, and my grandma and my granddaddy. And all of our friends. And church members that's gone on to be with the Lord. And they're going to know us when they see us, or we're going to know them when we see them. And we're just going to party forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Party hardy. So we don't have anything to dread. We only have something to look forward to. And Paul says that. I don't know if I should turn there, but I think I might. In First Thessalonians, I'm pretty sure that's where it's at. In First Thessalonians, chapter three, and verse thirteen. But I not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or have passed away, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. He said, I don't want you to be in sorrow because someone you know or love has passed away like others are. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even though them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them, they're coming back. And you see, we all believe we're going to live forever in heaven. But if you notice, they're coming back with him. Coming back where? Here. It wasn't God's intention that we live in heaven. You don't need a body in heaven. You need a body to live in the earth. And that's why he's going to raise our bodies from the grave, make them alive, refurbish them, and cover him in his glory. Why? Because we're going to live here forever and ever and ever. And we're going to walk this earth with him. And with our loved ones. I want you to know that. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Verse 15. That we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent or precede them which I have passed away. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall stand up right first. So they're going to be raised from the grave before we're quickened. Then we which are alive and remain, there's still going to be some of us that never die, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord, wherefore comfort one another with these words. That's what we have to look forward to. Amen. Amen. Another benefit of being in the kingdom of God, not something we're going to have in the future, but something we have here and now. And we can walk in that now. That's why there's going to be some alive and remain when he comes back. Some are going to believe it to the point that it'll be manifest in our or their life. Well, Brother Wayne, I told you before, it was appointed once for all men to die. I agree. I don't know about you, but I've already died once. We were crucified with him. Nevertheless, we live. But the life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God in Him. I want you to know, as I've said, I'll keep reminding you, we've already been resurrected. He said, walk in the fullness of the resurrection. Remember your baptism. You stand up right in the water which means you're alive. You go under the water, which means you're dead and buried. And you come out of the water into the newness of life. We've already been resurrected from the grave. And if we believe that fully, we can live that now. And that's what all those things are supposed to mean to us. But I say, man sort of loses the meaning of the tradition, just remembers the tradition. I'm going to say, this is not, we shouldn't celebrate because this is the 4th of July. That don't mean nothing. 4th of July is special because that's the day on which we signed the Declaration of Independence and declared our independence from the government of England and the Church of England. So happy Independence Day. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, can you praise the Lord this morning? Amen. Now, as we come to the table of the Lord, of course, we want you to bring your tithe and offering.